All right. Now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, basic JavaScript, use multiple conditional or ternary operators. So in the previous challenge, we used a single conditional operator. We can also chain them together to check for multiple conditions. So the following function uses if, if else, and else statements to check multiple conditions. So we've got function, we've got uh, greater or equal, pardon me, find greater or equal, and the arguments are A and B, and then we're gonna have if A triple equals B will return A and B are equal, else if A is greater than B will return A is greater, else will return B is greater, right? And that's pretty much cut and dry. Uh, so the above, pardon me, the above function can be rewritten using multiple conditional operators. So we've got a function, we've got this uh, function find greater or equal right here with A and B as the uh, arguments again. Then we'll have return, and on this one we'll do is A triple equal to B. Uh, if so, we'll return A and B are equal. Uh, hmm, else if A is greater than B, we'll uh, return A is greater, and then we'll do B is greater like that. And then we'll just have the question marks and the colons like we do for a ternary, oper ternary operator, pardon me. So this is considered a best practice to format multiple condition operators, pardon me, conditional operators such that each condition is on a separate line as shown above. Uh, using multiple conditional operators without proper indentation may make the code harder to read like this. I mean, this isn't even the worst, honestly. I would consider not not doing it for just this short of a thing, but sometimes they get to be like way, way long. And so, yeah, you want to kind of at least know how to do this, in my opinion. Uh, so in the check sign function, we're going to use multiple conditional operators following the recommended format used in find greater or equal uh, to check if a number is positive, negative, or zero. The function should return positive, negative, or zero all in strings like that. All right, so up here, what we're going to do first is we're going to say return. And then we'll start off with, um, what are we going to do? A num greater than zero, question mark. And if so, we'll say the string positive, like that. Then we'll have the colon like this. I do mine different than this one. I think this, this looks not as slick as it could. All right. So right, we've got that right there. Then we'll come over here and say ah, uh, num less than zero, question mark. Then we'll say negative, like that. Then we'll have another colon like this. And then we'll say, uh, we'll just come all the way over here and say zero, like that. And then let's do the semicolon. And then just to uh, make this look better, do it like that, like that. How about that? And I mean, you can make it look however you want. Uh, let's uh, get this check sign, wrap it up in parentheses like this to check it. Whoops. And we'll say in front of this console, oh, oh, console.log. All right. So you, we see positive right here for 10. Let's put the uh, negative sign in front of that. Negative looks good. Zero, zero. So let's run the test. Looks good and submit it. All right, now we're on to use recursion to create a countdown, and we'll see you next time.